All right, people, Catfish Dave here, more river experimentation. Uh, trying to see if that pattern I'm on down river, mid river, works even farther up river. I keep working my way up just to see what's going on. Getting a late start, I had some things to do. It's a little after three o'clock right now. Not supposed to be any sign of storms. Uh, it's gonna be hot, but not ridiculous. It's not supposed to get over, oh, about 88 degrees, which it's about that now. I was going up to a couple uh, other spots I had in mind and I seen this place on the left and I'm like, eh, let's try it, you know? So that's what we're doing. I'm fairly shallow right now, 13, but we're gonna get out into that more 17, 20 foot range at the end of it, which is where I've been hitting all the fish. Plenty of bait. Oh, it's about three days old, but it's still good. I've kept it cold. I've kept it cold. The only problem with these strange creeks is I don't know how bad the bottom is. Don't know if I'm gonna spend all day fishing or breaking off lines. Dragon weights help considerably, but not everywhere is draggable. Just depends on what's down there. We're gonna find out if this is draggable. There's my magic red float that's been catching, seemed like most of the fish uh, since the summer began. They wouldn't touch it early in the spring. Now they seem to prefer it. According to pattern, uh, skipjack heads haven't been catching jack squat. But I am going to throw a skipjack head on at least one rod. Because there's going to come a time when that's the only thing they'll hit. And we won't know unless we have it on there. Lawn mower down that way skill saw up this way. There's always plenty of extra noise in my videos. I've seen quite a bit of bait in this creek, just like all the other places that I've been to within this depth range. I guess that's a good reason the fish are here. Every time I come into one, I am locating bait, you know, at those depths. About a 15 minute boat ride up to this spot. Bad weather's around, I stay close to the ramp. On a day like today, I'll venture off a little bit. Yes, sir. Get some hydration in me. And we're officially fishing. First small bite in 16 foot. Nothing back there shallower where we first started. As we get up to 18 and 20, I'm expecting something to happen.
Once we got a 19 and a half foot, we got nailed. Old July fish. This is not a big creek at all as far as at least the 20 foot range. So we're gonna look for a, a better one that's got more deep water. We'll finish this one out. It's just, it's uh, for dragon, it's a pain. It's just got a short distance of this 20 foot depth. According to Navionics, it was farther than that, but it wasn't, so. There's one that's got a lot deeper water. A lot of 25 foot to 20 foot across the river. We're gonna head to that one next. All right, y'all, this is that cove across the river. It'll have a little more of deep water, or at least the 20. I got some dude in a wakeboard. He's a half mile over here from me, and he's louder than I am. But either way, uh, we're in another cove. Come deer season, all them people disappear. Mother. I can promise you, even though that river is wide open, they'll be back in here on me. Yeah, here they come. Good, the guy fell out there. That'll buy me another minute apiece out here on a weekday and can't get no peace from no wake boat. We might be going in another cove here real soon. Good, he fell again. That'll buy me a couple more minutes of peace. Maybe I'll go ahead and get out of here before they decide to turn around. Because they can't use that mile of cove back there. They got to keep going back beside me. They don't want to go out in the river where they've got a lot of room. Because if they do that, they can't go beside me. They're coming back. I hope he falls before he gets to me. That'll give me some waves. This ain't a very long cove, so I'm going to pull much slower or we'll be out of it in no time. At least it's quiet in here. We're hooked up. Red float. Well, there's something in this small coat. I'm always splashing that nasty water in my food or drink. I would have liked to have finished that. That was some old gar. Snatched my bait. All right, y'all, I'm not impressed with the backwater bite this far up in the reservoir this time of year. They're definitely doing something different. I'm gonna get out here in the main channel and we're gonna drag it. I think that's gar anyway, because that's two in a row that's pulled the bait.
that pattern ain't working this far up. And I ain't no one dimensional cat fisherman. So we going out deep now. I don't have no core set, so I'll have to watch the graft and do it by hand, but this far up the river, there ain't nothing going on in these coves. They doing something totally different. And that's all right, we'll adjust. I don't know why I took my weight off there. I must be having a heat stroke. Dag blasted summer. I've got to let out plenty of line because uh, we're in 31 foot up in this part of the channel. It's like a secondary channel. But once we get down in there, we're going to be hitting 50, 60, even farther down, some 80 foot. So I got to let plenty of line out to adjust for the holes and all that stuff. If they ain't in there, they've got to be out here. Here comes that wake boat. They seen me out here. Come out in the main channel and here they come. Old fire water marine weight about got hung up. Came loose, popped the planer board loose, so I got to reel it in and start over. So far we've had one pretty good bite. And I missed him. A few bites out here in this channel. Nothing real promising. So far, this upper section of the river seems to be pretty dead. I'm seeing a lot of bait on the surface. It's small bait, it's fry. But just because of that, and we're not catching much anyway, I'm gonna throw this float rig out. It's a set about six foot deep. I'm just gonna have a bait going about six foot below the surface. It can't hurt. It's at the point I'm about to have a heat stroke. My camera shut off several times. That breeze I had, it ain't cooperating too good. I'd rather it be in the 90s and windy than in the high 80s with no wind. This channel is pretty rough down there. These weights are either dragging or trying to get hung up. Every time I stand up, I get dizzy. Slip float, about six foot down. You never know. I don't know what kind of hook that is. It's, it's uh, not one I usually buy. It's one old cousin Delbert sent. After getting four lines out, and throwing that float out, I'm hung up. That means I've got to pull it all in. Yo, that's the craziest thing in the world. That thing was hung up and as I'm coming up on it, I felt a fish hit it and he pulled it loose from whatever is hung up on. Now I have a fish on. Obviously, whatever that was, there was a fish living right next to it. At least we got our dragon rig back. If he wouldn't have hit it, I might have had to pull it or break it off. But 
That's not the first time that's happened where I've been hung up and a fish came and pulled it the opposite direction and got it loose. The reason that fish hit is because I'm trying to eat some tuna. I'm running one mile an hour, and the main reason for that is I've got a pretty strong current going down river. Uh, you get pretty good flow this far up the reservoir. I'd say the current's running between 0.8 and 0.9, so I barely got enough to spread my planer boards by the time I run one mile an hour. Just an old dink fish out here in 40 something foot of river channel. I t uh oh. If I could have set the hook on that, I might have got it. We got one on a head piece. Out here in 40 something foot of water. All experimental people. I needed to find out how it was doing up here. This is closer to the house. This will eventually open up. By August, this will be good fishing up here. I must have a fish on that one on the left. It's, that board just keeps dragging. He finally let go. I've been able to slow my trolling motor speed back down. The reason it was so swift up there is because I was coming around an island. Of course, the river is about the same size, even where an island is. But by the time you put that big island in the middle of the river, it reduces the area greatly where the water can flow and it really speeds up the current. Now that we're in just wide open river, I'm able to drag about 0.7 and I'm still getting some planer board spread. They definitely seem to be a little inactive today. Last time I videoed thunderstorms rolled in, that was a cold front. We are on the back side of that. Sometimes that can really kill the bite. This one went a while without a bite after it had that fish hanging on to it. And I checked it. No bait. Bait works great. Use it if you got it.
best fish of the day. That's a little better. We'll put a weight on him. He's a little better. Oh, where are we at there? Uh, that's a 16 pound fish. That's better than them five pounders and eight pounders. Yeah. on the red float, always when I'm trying to eat something. Mean and ornery. Mean and ornery fish. 42 foot of water. He's a little scarred up. The body chunks are outperforming the heads. That's the way it's been about five trips now. I felt that fish hit while I was trying to adjust my planter board. And he may be stuck on there. I got one stuck on here, I believe. Ugh. I felt him hit while I was trying to put my planer board on. I felt the thump in my hand. I'll tell you what, it feels kind of heavy. This is definitely a different kind of fight here. It's either a bigger blue or a flathead's got a hold of it. I believe he's in this other line over here. He pulled some drag on me. I don't know what we got. Yeah, he's in my other line. I'm gonna slow 
slow the boat down. Way down. Got him loose. This might be a big old flathead the way it's acting. Yes, sir. I just seen some big old bubbles. Oh, shoot, 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 shoot. Definitely the biggest fish of the day. There he is. There he is. It's big. I can't tell what kind it is. Big, big flathead. Big flathead. Big flathead. Come on, Mr. Flathead. Come in here and get in my net. No, 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 that's a good fish. Come on, Mr. Flathead. Come on, Mr. Flathead. I got it. Yeah. Sir, I was trying to set that planer board, and I felt this thump, and I'm like, what was that? So I put the planer board on, and it just acted like it was dragging, doing something weird. I'm like, I'm thinking it's just a small four-pound fish. And then once I got to torquing on him, I realized he wasn't small. Oh, he's got a big wide head. He's kind of thin uh, from coming off spun. Man, if this fish had been eating while, he'd be a heavy, heavy fish. Right now, he's just kind of wide and thin that time of year. All right, y'all, normally that would be a 50 pound fish, but he's so thin from coming off the nest. I don't think that fish is much over the 30s. Hold still, buddy. Let's see what we got. Ugh. He's 36 right now. Any other time of year, that fish would be a 50 pounder. He's so wide. Oh, just big wide head on him. Yes, sir. Yes, sir, big wide head. Well, 
Well, I wonder what I missed there. He's still on. Got me wrapped up in a big old mess, but he's still on. Yeah. All right, y'all, an experimental run. Got me hooked up with a nice flathead. Tried the same thing I was doing on the lower reservoir, man, and there just wasn't a lot going on in them coves. Of course, there wasn't a lot going on out here in this channel. Now, granted, I did get a late start. I didn't even get out here till about three o'clock. Uh, it's been hot, but that's a good sign uh, to see a flathead that thin, because that lets me know he's been on the nest and come off. Those bigger fish are harder to come by this time of year. In the fall, they'll get fairly easy almost every trip. Either way, this was another trip. This is a video. There was fish in the video. That makes it a fishing video. This is Catfish Dave with another one, signing out.